My name is Julieta Nicolasian. Also with me is Tanya Fincham. We're with the Oklahoma State University Library. Uh, today is Saturday, November 19th, 2011. We're in Hugo, Oklahoma, interviewing Tracy Cavallini as part of the uh, Hugo Oral History Project centered around uh, occupations. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Uh, we'd like to learn a little bit more about you. Could you tell us the year you were born and where you were born? 1972 and right here in Hugo, Oklahoma. Okay. And tell me um, a little bit about growing up in Hugo. Well, um, when I think about my younger years, probably the circus jumps out more than actually growing up in Hugo. But... Um, I always felt very fortunate. I thought I had the best of both worlds because I had a home base. Um, I went to school here at Hugo my entire life. I graduated from high school here. and But yet I got to travel um, on the circus with my family for the majority of the time. So I wasn't actually in Hugo full time until I started middle school. And that's when my, um, my mother stayed home with us and we went to school um, for the full school season. And then... Um, only traveled on the circus during the summer months. So, and uh, you know, you, you come from a circus family. Mm -hmm. What is your your earliest circus memory? Mm. <laughs> I don't think I've ever thought of that. Um, I don't know because sometimes I think you can get memories confused with pictures and and stories that you were told. Um, well, that maybe your first job on this. On the my circus. first job. Well, my first job on the circus was probably like most of the little kids start. Um, we have a parade, and um, and we, I say we. There were quite a few children, you know, my age and my sister. She's uh, three years younger than me, but um, we were always in the parades. Um, my first, I'd say, aerial act <laughs> was called swinging ladder, and it's literally just. Um, like a little ladder and it has a loop that hangs at the top of it and um, it only hangs about four four feet off the ground or so and um, you hang by your hand and your foot your ankle and you do tricks on that and I, I did that probably when I was about seven seven or eight so but the parade being in the parade and being in it um, I'm not exactly sure what age but they you always get stuck in doing that as a little kid so <laughs> My children, I mean, my daughter and son have both done the parade, and um, it's fun. They, I mean, kids enjoy dressing up and being a part of it, so. Well, talk a little bit about, uh, you know, you mentioned Swinging Ladder. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the other uh, acts or performances you may have gravitated to as you were growing up. Well, um, I had a horse. Uh, Xanadu was his name. He was a black quarter horse. And uh, I did dressage. And then I performed with the elephants. I rode on the elephants. And then all young women um, learn web, the Spanish web, which is just the rope with the loop at the top. And you um, climb up and you hang by your foot and your hand while it's spinning. So um, I did that. And then as I got a little older, after I met my my husband, when we were dating, we actually performed together. A couple of acts. Um, I always enjoyed performing. I'm kind of a shy person, but I enjoyed the performing part of it. And we did perch pole, which is um, just literally a pole that someone balances on their shoulder or their head, and you climb up and you do tricks on the top of it. And we did bamboo, which he hung by his foot, and then you do hand to hand tricks. And so I we performed like just in the show, my husband and I, for a year, and then after we got married, um, we took over the concessions. So my my mom could she was pretty happy when the performing part was over and um, we were just um, doing something else on the show. So and did you ever, you know, uh, think that, you know, you really wanted to settle uh doing um settle is not the right word. Uh gravitate more towards um out of performing and more into other aspects of the business? Yes, yeah. I mean, I I always knew that um I wasn't made out to be, you know, a, a grand performer. I just, um, I enjoyed it, and it was something I enjoyed. And um, But it's it's hard on the body, and um, 
I was I was happy to move into the next stage. So, mm. well, backing up, you you went to school for mm-hmm. the most part at Hugo, mm-hmm. um, and uh, what was that like for you? Um, it was it was wonderful. I mean, we always had uh, had close friends that were here in Hugo, and it wasn't like it was. I mean, when I look back, it doesn't seem like it was anything abnormal. I mean. They knew we were with the circus. It was just a part of our daily life. I mean, I remember um, at elementary school, we would take some costumes down and show around and talk about it. Or um, sometimes the they would schedule tours, which they still do with the schools, and come out and see the animals. And, I mean, that was always fun to show off and, you know, feel, feel important <laughs> with your friends at school. But really, it was just a normal life. I mean... They, I mean, everyone growing up in Hugo, there's just, there's a circus here. I mean, so it's part of life. And you went on to college? Yes. Uh-huh. I graduated from Trinity University in San Antonio. So. Okay. And did you have aspirations to return to the family business? Yes, always. But always. Um, my mother, I mean, I know my sister would say the exact same thing. She never pushed us to come back. I mean... I actually think she, in her own way, um, not was pushing us away, but wanted us to be sure and know that there were, you know, other opportunities out there. And and it's it's a wonderful life, but it it's a hard life at the same time. And so, I mean, getting a college education and knowing that we had the choice, to, you know, to make our own decisions in life, that was always there. So, well, could you talk a little bit about the uh your memories of your grandparents. Mm. Wonderful memories of my grandparents because um, in a way, I mean, they raised us almost as much as my, my parents did. After um, middle school, when my mom, she came home and would stay with us for a couple of years. But then my grandparents got older and it just seemed like the right time for my grandparents to stay home and my mom and dad to stay on the show. So um, we were with my grandparents all through high school. Um, they were the ones that we lived with. Well, we've always lived together. I mean, we've always were in this house together. So uh, they were just a very special part of my life. So I feel very fortunate to have been that close to them and had that relationship with them. Do you have any favorite uh, stories from, from off your grandmother? <laughs> would, you have, would she let you have in the kitchen or... Um, teach you certain things or well I mean she I don't know my grandmother was just just a good person I mean a good heart I don't think anyone would say anything different um so when you did hear her say like a bad word or I mean it was always funny and what always would get her riled up um she had a they had some good friends Ion and Donnie who were in the business and um I'm sure if my mom heard their names, she could tell you tons of stories about them with my grandparents. But they would come over and visit, and my sister and I would be back in our bedrooms. And just to hear them laughing and screaming and, you know, saying cuss words and talking about the old times. I mean, that was, it was always fun to hear them. And it's it's sad because they were a different generation. I mean, they had different stories than, than we had to tell, but very special. Did you get to make some of your own costumes? Um, seamstress is not seem to be my talent. Um, I maybe because I just never tried, but no, I didn't make my own costumes. But I do have memories. That, so there's some memories. Um, they used to downstairs in our basement is where they would sew, and so they would have all the costumes. Um, I mean, I remember my my grandmother, my mother, my aunt Lisa, who. Um, I don't know if you guys have met, but she's here in Hugo. She's my cousin, actually. But in um, her mom, Barbara June, um, who's passed away, but they would make the elephant blankets. I remember rolls and rolls of yarn where they would make the tassels um, to hang on the, the blankets. And um, so all that took place right down here in the bottom of this house. So, Well, as a, a youth growing up... Uh on the circus, Mm -hmm. what were some rules, some things that you could not do on the lot? Well, I mean, we had, um, we had our schedules, we had our curfews, we had our times we had to come be in. I mean, you know, when the show was over, you had to, had to be back in the house, but growing up, I mean, we, 
we played hard. I mean, we, we loved to play in the tent. We loved to be behind the seats, swinging on the bars, acting like it was the flying trapeze, um, playing on the webs. Um, I don't know. The circus is a, it's a wonderful place. I think for children to grow up, um, it's like a small community and you feel very safe within your, within your community, within the people. Cause, um, there are hardworking people. There's a lot of um, families. You travel together, and everyone really looks out for each other while you're together. At, you know that time. So um, you didn't wander off the law. You didn't go outside of your your area. You know, but um, within that area, there. I I mean, as far as just a lot of restrictions, that doesn't come to my mind. What about in terms of m mischief, though? Mischief. <laughs> Surely there yeah. was some mischief as kids growing up. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, that thing is just jumping into my mind. But, I mean, of course you didn't. You don't go around the animals. I mean, that's not... But that that would be a rule. I mean, you you stayed away. Um, but. What are some terms that us towners would not understand mm -hmm. uh, donnakers that's the restrooms um the white elephant that's i don't know that's um the pump truck that comes out to to pump out the donnakers okay. <laughs> um a straw house um, that's a full house when people are sitting on the um lot lice that's the the public out walking around seeing seeing the circus. Um, this I don't think is an official circus term, but my granny always called them juice suckers, <laughs> and they were people who would come and visit and bring their trailer and plug into our lights. And um, but that wasn't official. I think that was just my granny's word, juice suckers. And um, I mean, there's tons of boards. I'm sure um, my mom probably would know a lot more of those than I would, but that's a few. <laughs> Have you ever blown the arrow? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, that's not that's not a fun experience when you're driving a truck and a 44-foot trailer and, you know, you got your kids and your dogs and <laughs> everything in there. But nowadays, I mean, with our cell phones, it's just like a different world. I mean... It's amazing to have an iPhone and to be able to punch in everything in your different locations. I mean, I remember the first cell phone we had. Um, I don't know what year. I probably was 16, 17, maybe. Maybe younger than that. Probably younger than that. But it was this huge box. And you just, you didn't use it. It was just for emergencies because, I mean, who knows what it costs a minute, you know, to use that phone. But, um... But that's probably some memories for other people, too. I mean, just not having access to the phone, so you'd save up quarters and be out on the pay phone, you know, trying to call home to check in with um, with when my grandparents were at home. Or, But how things have changed now. <laughs> so do you drive a big uh, a semi? I do. I have my CDL, so I drive my house. And um, my husband drives the concessions, and then everyone drives. I mean, that's definitely one of the first things you do when you, you don't just learn to drive, you learn to pull the trailer. So that's part of it. <laughs> and park the trailer. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, who, who taught you how to drive? Um, just drive a car. I mean, we always had, like, golf carts around that you would drive around, so... Driving seems, it kind of seems to be a natural thing that you progress into larger vehicles. But um, my my grandfather would let me drive um, a lot at a young age. So, but my parents spoiled us. I mean, I had a um, my first car at 15 and a half when I had my permit. So I've <laughs> been driving since I was very young. I just can't imagine parking a semi. <laughs> well, the good, the yeah. Other well, the good thing about the circuses is, is that um, when you pull onto your lot, um, right right now it's my husband and my brother-in-law, Gustavo. I mean, everything has their location where they go. And so they park you and you're directed. 
But but when you're traveling and your kids want to go to McDonald's and they don't understand, you know, that you can't get in and around and out. So that's probably when I get into tighter situations. It's in the morning driving over when I try to stop someplace and you're, you know, trying to maneuver around or when you have to fill up with fuel. But when you pull into the lot, it's pretty easy because literally you just have to follow directions. <laughs> so take me through when you're on the road, uh, a typical day for you. Mm -hmm. uh, with concessions. With the concessions? Yes. Um, well, my husband and I, we used to do all the buying and, um, I mean, I've probably been to every Sam's and Walmart, you know, across the United States. But um, right now, it's, um, we have a gentleman that actually does the buying for us. But a typical day in the circus is we get up between 536, just depending on how many miles we have to travel. And then... Um, the I've got a really good crew of guys, you know, that have worked with us for quite a while. And um, we sometimes you'll have inspectors that come out during the day. We like to schedule them at around three o'clock. And that way we've had time to clean up all the stands, get everything plugged in. And um, then we open at around three thirty. So and then once you open, it's open until closing at around nine thirty. 9.45 at night. Um, I order all the stock, the novelties items, and the concessions, the popcorn boxes, snow cones. But then you will buy, like, daily ice, hot dog buns, apples for the caramel apples. And, like I said, I've got a really good crew of guys. So we have a trailer. We have cotton candy, snow cones, popcorn, hot dogs, Polish, nachos, caramel apples just the typical circus junk <laughs> and uh do you give direction to your butchers or no they rotate they rotate their products and um i settle up like they'll turn in um, we have a gentleman that counts out issues the stock and then they'll settle up with me that evening after the second show and then the next day i um We'll cal do the calculations and then turn the money into the office the, the following day for that day. And that would be the novelty money, the color books, and the food items. And then in the off season, when mm -hmm. you're back home off the road, yes. what are your responsibilities? Um, circus related, I mean, when it's a family business, you, you just help out wherever. But I do all of the immigration work. Um, we bring in... Um, most of our workers are on a H-2B. It's a seasonal uh, visa, actually, for circus laborers. So that's cool. Uh, it would be the same category like um, tree planters that are that type of worker. And most of those come from Mexico. I mean, we have gentlemen that have worked for us. There's one man who pops into my head. He came in 74, so I was two years old. He's been with us that, you know, that long. And we have a lot of guys who have been with us for a long time good, loyal, hardworking men and women. And um, so I do all of that. And that's kind of, it's not a year round, but when you, I'll start the paperwork like in August and then it's kind of ongoing and depending on when we have our show finalized, what performers, the performers come in on a P1 visa and um, we'll bring in performers we have from all over the country, Ukraine, Russia, South America, um, so that's the, probably the main, the main, you know, project I do, but. And is it, has it been over the years, uh, increasingly difficult working yes. with the government? Well, I mean, it is more difficult and I understand, um, I understand why. I mean, I would definitely say since, um, since 9-11, um, there were some huge changes, um, in restrictions and just more security as far as confirming that you're really bringing in performers, you know, and, and that, but it's all doable. <laughs> and is language ever an issue since you deal with so many different uh, people trying to get them in? Well, it has, um, most of the performers are Hispanic. So, um, I'm fluent in Spanish, so that helps out a lot, but, over the past, um, with the Ukrainians, it seems like our Russians, we've always kind of had someone 
with us that helped translate that language. The first one year, my grandfather started um, the Chinese Imperial Circus. I don't know if you've heard of that, but um, he, um, it was fabulous. We weren't involved at all. It was kind of like he woke up one day and he was going to do this. So <laughs> you just supported him. And he brought over like 30 performers from the Republic of China. And they were incredible performers, really. But and when they got here, I mean, we went down to our local Chinese restaurant <laughs> because to help translate because we could not communicate at all with them. But, so, but it seems like there's always someone, you know, who can help out. And how did uh, you become fluent in Spanish? Well, I've been around Spanish my entire life and I minored in it in Spanish in college. And then actually my husband is from Peru. Okay. So his family, um, his mother, his sisters, you know, they they've all here and most of them work with us still so which is wonderful cuz my children get to be with both grandparents so oh, yeah. <laughs> both sets how how do you handle or juggle being a, a mom on the show during, mm -hmm. during travel time during travel time um i mean i've always said i think the circus is a wonderful place to raise a family um you're working but you're you're there. I mean, you're with your family while you're doing doing your work, and the the children have they have jobs, they have responsibilities. Um, we have a school teacher, so there's a schedule. There's a schedule while you're traveling. Um, after we get get up and drive over, and um, they're usually carried to the truck because they're still asleep. Um, but we had a wonderful teacher that traveled with us this year. Um, we had three different classes, so. My children went to school for about an hour and a half each. Um, they they practiced. Um, they had just because they enjoy it, and I don't think they'll ever be, you know, performers. But I think it's it's good for them to pra practice and appreciate it. And um, then they, my son worked in the office. He's ten, so he does well with money already, and. He worked in the office, and my daughter did the parade, and so I mean you're working, but you're you're there together, so you get to spend a lot of time with them. You actually get to go and watch the show, so yeah, definitely. Yeah. So I enjoy watching the concessions is right there, and I spend a lot of the time watching the show, probably more than in the concession stand, but just back and forth. Do you have a favorite part? Um, I'd say the the parade and the aerial ballet. This year it was beautiful. It was um, butterflies with lots of colors. And my cousin Lisa and my mom, they made, last year, they made some beautiful um, blankets with the elephants and these wings at the, the aerial. It was very pretty. Well, growing up to now, you've probably noticed some changes in the circus. Mm -hmm. What are some of those that you've noticed through the years? Well, just with our circus, I mean, we've downsized a lot. I mean, Carson and Barnes, when I grew up, it was a five-ring circus. Um, over 200 people traveled with us. Um, all of our animals, our elephants traveled with us when I was younger. So, I mean, we had 17, 18 elephants traveling, um, Carson and Barnes. Um, so, I mean, just the, the downsizing over the years... Um, I don't know if probably part of it is because when you're younger, it's all fun and magical and you don't see, but it's, it's harder. Um, there's definitely more, more restrictions. Um, I mean, our circus are, there's been a change just that, um, it's gotten more difficult. I mean, business, the, there's more activities for the children. It seems like people are, are, are busy. Um, so more, more competition, but at, at some point were you the, involved with the PR? I, I've never done that. So, yeah. Well, as you, you look back, uh, what's your, your favorite part about the circus? Mm. I mean, is there a certain smell or a certain <clears throat> feeling when you wake up or? I mean, I can say a couple of things jump to my mind. Um, one of the things is the favorite, 
my favorite thing that the circus has given me is the opportunity um, to be with my family, to have the relationship I have with my grandparents, to have my children be able to have that relationship with my parents. I mean, I think that's, on a personal note, um, my favorite thing about the circus is the, the life that it's, um, that it's given me and the opportunities it's given me as a family to be so close. Um, there's nothing like being in a circus when there's a lot of people, a full house, and the elephants come in, and you hear those oohs and ahs of the children and the excitement. And um, after the show, when you see how much um, the people have enjoyed it, or to, um, I mean, to see a little kid in a small town in Kansas or, you know, Oklahoma, anywhere, um, come on to the lot and be like, wow, you know, the elephants are here. And, I mean, there's nothing like giving that joy to people and and really feeling that they um they appreciate what you're doing so that's a special feeling when you're when you actually go to the show and, and watch are you looking at anything in particular how it's all working or the peanut pitch or yeah any of that um i think probably I have, um, I mean, I'm sure we look at the circus differently than like the public would, but I, you can't help but, or I can't, um, you kind of notice the things that, oh, you know, they shouldn't be doing that, or you, you know, you see kind of the things that in your mind are negative that people might not notice, but um, after you've seen it, you know, over and over, I guess you're, I tend to focus in on on the things that aren't just right, you know, when you're watching it. But I enjoy watching the whole show. I mean, yeah, the green speck, the speck. Yeah. <laughs> Has music changed much during? Well, when I grew up, we had a band. We had a live band, so um, I remember that. Um, our my school teacher, Mrs. Reynolds, as I grew up, um, her family actually had the band. She played the organ, and her husband um, played the trumpet, I think. And um, so, I mean, that's that's a huge change to go to to um, recorded music. And I know that was a hard decision when they made that decision, you know, to not carry that band along. And I remember we used to have old cassettes and it was a big deal when we had when we first switched over and now it's all it's all on computer. So are there any other uh changes that uh you've noticed through the years? Mm, I mean there's there's a lot of changes but Um, the way they make cotton candy or oh or no apples or anything like yeah. That. yeah the way you've traveled well, that pretty much has stayed the same since I've grown up I mean we've always been in our own our own truck and trailer and um, we always travel early in the morning it's always kind of like a caravan I mean as long as I can remember at five thirty in the morning someone's driving around honking a horn and that means it's time to get up and then the mechanics follow it up. My parents have always kind of stayed towards the back. My dad likes to um, make sure that the grounds are left in, in good condition. The trash is all picked up. The manure is where it's supposed to be. Um, and then the mechanics follow everyone up, make sure everyone makes it over. So as long as I can remember, that's been our travel procedures. <laughs> Any important lessons passed down from your grandparents or your parents that resonate with you? I'm never good at those questions. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing ever just pops into my mind when I'm... I'm sure later I'll think of something, but... Okay. Uh, You've seen many different parts of the country. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have a favorite place you like to play? A favorite venue? Well, I mean, there's wonderful opportunities. There's beautiful parts of the country. I mean, I think as a child, I would remember um, Michigan area, the Great Lakes. Um, in the summertime up there, it's it's beautiful. And we always had... 
a lot of fun like um, Oshkosh, Kenosha, Racine, um, circus fans, cookouts, Bratswurst, um, piers, being by the pier and walking out. I mean, it's beautiful. It's beautiful up in there. But um, this year, I mean, we traveled west and we went through um, Utah and the mountains. I mean, there's just so many beautiful parts of the United States. But when I, I mean, a lot of people think California, Arizona, nice weather, you know, climate, but I think of dirt. I mean, we're in dirt fields a lot. Um, and when I was young and I would think of California, they would burn off, if there was a blade of grass, um, they would burn it off for fear of, of fire. So we would be out in this, you know, just not nice stuff. But so, I mean, probably what normal people would think of isn't the same reason why I would like an area or, you know, not like an area, but. And uh, as you, as you've seen all kinds of different places, um, you know, you, you continue to call Hugo home. What's, mm. what's special about Hugo for you? I mean, I just that it's home. I mean, it's always wonderful to come home. Um, it's, it's wonderful to know that you're in a community that, that appreciates, um, what you do, that welcomes you home. Um, but I think that would be true with, with everyone. I mean, our church family, um, the schools, it's, it's, it's nice to feel welcomed. Um, we've been very fortunate. Um, I was growing up and my children, um, that the school system has worked so well with us and, you know, let our children go back in and, and study during our off season. Uh, as we kind of come to, to the end, um, where do you, where do you see the future, not necessarily of Carson and Barnes, mm -hmm. but the, the future of the circus heading? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I, I, I believe there's always a place for, for circus. I mean, it's, it's family entertainment. It's magical. It's making memories with your family. Um, I mean, circuses have definitely changed just where it is now. But, and I'm sure there will be more, more changes. But um, I think there's always going to be a place for circus. Is there anything you'd like to add that we haven't asked you about today? <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't think so. Well, thank you so much for your You're time. Welcome. We really appreciate it. You're welcome.